del ensamble experimental electrónico SPOL propone un acercamiento a la escena electrónica desde sus protagonistas. Conversaremos con DJs, productores y demás profesionales de la industria desde Berlín, Tokio, Atenas, New York, Londres, Santiago de Chile, Buenos Aires, Isis Salvaterra nació en Brasil, vivió en Londres por más de dos décadas. Obtuvo un bachillerato en Artes en Humanidades, combinando Psicología, Sociología y Políticas y Desarrollo del Tercer Mundo en la Universidad de Westminster. En el 2017 comenzó una maestría en Etnomusicología en la City University de Londres, encabezada por cursos de capacitación en gestión de proyectos y coaching. Hola Ecuador, um, espero que estén todos bien y seguros durante esta pandemia. Um, mi nombre es Isis Abaterra, soy la propietaria de Toy Toy Music. Uh, Toy Toy Music es una agencia de artistas, una, un record label y eventos desde warehouses como clubs por todo el mundo. Um, algunos de mis artistas son uh, Sammy D, Ion Ludwig, um, Olio Verna y muchísimos otros. La mayoría son de Perlón. Um, pueden mirar en uh, www.toytoymusic.com Toytoy Music con K porque ven desde alemán. Eh, bueno, uh, Dani me ha enviado unas preguntas para um, hablar con vosotros. Uh, yo voy a hacerlas en inglés porque um, es mejor y más... Es, a pesar de hablar español, creo que son, uh, son cosas que normalmente soy acostumbrada a hablar en inglés. Entonces, aquí vamos. La primera pregunta. Uh, when did you realize that your path would lead to becoming a cultural manager? Um, I didn't. Um, basically, I was always the type of person that um, would go to a school barbecue or I would rather be organizing it and I would never go to a party without another 30 or 60 people with me. So um, it was a natural course of things. But when the day came for me to decide to um, be a cultural manager, or, or I didn't make that decision. Um, I simply love music. And in fact, when I had to make this decision, I made a contrary decision. Um, in my head, whoever puts music and business on the same sentence, that was wrong in my view, because music is something for me that is so sacred and so is spiritual and so with so much contact that uh, putting business into it would actually mess it up. Um, so in my head, I decided to do something against it. Uh, in terms of contrary to, to music. So I did uh, psychology, sociology and politics. Also having come from South America, from Brazil, um, and growing up in London, I wanted to know the differences uh, in a political scale, also socially and psychologically. Why is it different between you know, South America and Europe kind of thing? So I chose to do that. Um, little that I knew that um, Eventually, this what I studied is totally in line with music, and I'll explain that later. I think everything that I did or do is very natural. You know, I always say that things will show up in front of you, you just need to be very aware to see that they are there. When something is too forced, um, it doesn't really. It, it's kind of like um, designed to be. And I believe in the power of music leading us to a path where you should go to. So, um, for example, when I was doing my warehouse parties, um, Toy Toy started as an event platform. So once a month, we were in different warehouses in London. Um, and each month I, I built a warehouse from scratch. That means a sound system, bar, door, everything from zero. So you just take a warehouse that is empty and you build it from scratch. 
the events are now 10 years old. Um, the record label was born because I uh, was looking for Mr. G for a long time. He wasn't playing anywhere. When I found him, um, he told me, if you found me, you deserve to have me. When he came to play, he was so inspired that um, that gig was meant to be the last gig of his life, basically. He was going to stop playing because he was so, um, you know, not, not really happy with the scene and the industry and everything. So on that day that he played for me, he was so inspired that he said, you are going to open a record label and I won't take no as an answer. And so I did. And my first release was his. And if you look, there was a special edition of... Um, um, cover that we did so it's something that you know came to me and it came to being through Mr. G who I thoroughly respect and from this gig he uh, he went to the boiler room and his career picked up again at 51 years old which is something really gratifying to, to have and to see um, and my last release was Ricardo Villalobos and Argenis Brito um, the label itself is a little bit on a stop at the moment. Um, I'm currently living in Romania and doing a lot of other side projects, um, but I will pick it up and, and do it back again. Um, the tools, in order to, to run, if, since the focus is on record label, um, we are obviously advocates of vinyl. So my record label is vinyl only. That is not to say I am against uh, digital releases, as long as the sound quality, meaning WAV files or TIFF or files that are, are um, higher quality and it doesn't jeopardize the sound quality of what's coming out, meaning to not use MP3. Um, but um, uh, I, I support both uh, platforms, but primarily vinyl. So I release on vinyl first because I feel that it carries a lot, of, a lot more with it uh, compared to uh, just digital releases. Um, digital labels is not really our strength. Um, like I said, that's not to say we are against uh, digital uh, fi playing in digital files, but we are for the art of DJing. For example, I would not uh, consider a full DJ somebody that doesn't know how to play two records and I mean vinyl records, not mixing on a CDJ. Again, that's not to say that a CDJ uh, shouldn't complement mixing, but uh, primarily a uh, person to call themselves a DJ in my book, they need to know how to mix two vinyl records. Um, and for the label, so we do, um, I do vinyl only. Um, and I haven't yet made anything available digitally. Um, it's just a matter of choice. And like I said, I stopped the vinyl releases for the moment. But uh, if you do want to uh, run a record label, uh, and if you want it to be vinyl only, you need to find a good master engineer as a start of all. Uh, then you need to find a pressing plant um, and a distribution. So the pressing plant takes care of the whole process of pressing the vinyl for you. Um, once they get the masters from the engineer, um, then the distribution is the people that are going to make sure that your records are going to get to all the shops around the world that you should get to. You can have a say on what record shops you want it to be available. Um, and obviously you need to decide how many pressings you want. The general case is that there's a minimum of 300 uh, records pressed. That's for you to break even um, on the pricing and everything. So in other words, releasing music does not it's not going to make you any money. Um, not uh, at our level anyway, we just release music because we love it. Um, Um, I truly admire and respect all of my artists. They wouldn't be on my roster if they um, didn't have my respect and admiration. Um, each one of them are so uniquely them that, um, you know, I always say that um, what the definition of the word artist is because they can do something that someone else can't. There is an uniqueness about them and it's their uniqueness that should be celebrated. And this is why when people say to me like, oh, um, do you prefer this or that? Um, there's no such a thing because they are different. So, uh, you know, we do have our preferences, but um, that's uh, we all have our taste and that needs to stay with us. You might prefer X to Y. Or when somebody said, who do you think is the best? 
There is no such a question in respect to artists. Um, there is no best or worst because they are intrinsically different. Um, best or worst, we can compare with things that can be measured, mixing technique or the technical stuff that you know is either wrong or wrong, or you can measure it, but it's not something we would do really. Um, now, my admiration uh, in terms of an artist and what an artist should stand for. Um, artists, for example, they, they have really fucked minds and uh, that's what makes them amazing at what they are. There's always something that is, you know, and it's amazing. We should celebrate that. Um, but uh, I would like to mention Radu. Um, Radu is somebody that I have uh, worked with or been close with for so many years. And he has every bit that um, an artist should stand for. No ego, humble, respectful of others, extremely intelligent, extremely cultured, always seeking to learn more, um, and technically is a beast. <laughs> um, so it makes up because most people think that, you know, an artist is just what they produce, what they produce or just the DJ. What makes up an artist is not, it doesn't start or finish on the decks, it's way beyond that. Um, it takes it a lot. The, um, the whole package also outside of the decks who is this person and if you try to compare you would always see that the person is intrinsically connected to the art um, they are a reflection of each other always um, I always say you know trying to find a head that makes amazing music you're probably gonna have a hard time trying to find one It's quite funny that this comes um, this comes at a point where um, yesterday I was um, I was doing something towards that. This crisis might well represent a huge uh, huge setback in our industry. At a point that we might be risking to lose a lot of it. Um, of course, when you are in Europe and some governments are backing us as small companies or booking agencies and everything, um, but they cannot be there for long. So there was an initiative, I don't know if you've guys seen, but it's a very uh, good example as well. It's called Booking United. Um, 70 German uh, agencies got together in order to uh, share their common needs and interests, not only to help each other, but to stand towards their governments and do something about it. So myself and Tracy from Ruyaku decided to do the same, but for European and world scale. We are taking every promoter, every agent, every agency and every from every country. So the way I'm designing this project is designing by country. We had a first meeting yesterday um, and uh, it has been quite uh, uh, something. You have every major promoter from every European capital. Um, and we did by region, we take a little bit of South and Central America. So you guys are heard as well in terms of this crisis um, and how we can help each other. Not only how we can help each other, but how our governments can actually help us. I also did a talk uh, for Electronic Beats. Um, maybe Danny can provide you with the link where I talk about this crisis in depth and the internal difficulties that we have been having and how we have been doing to cope with keeping ourselves there and together um, through live streams or through you know talking to each other online or doing things like like we're doing right now these are all things that we are we can do all of us to, to help each other at the moment so uh, if you have a look at the electronic beats um, bit, there, there is a lot more about this there um, Well, I must say that as an agent and as a manager, um, as you all must agree, South America is a very difficult region to deal with. But because I speak Spanish and Portuguese, um, I find uh, that it's easier for me to deal with them compared to, say, a German agent or something. Um, they are, you know, even though it's difficult, I always say to my artists, even though it's difficult for me to run the bookings, uh, it is their favorite place in the world to go to because you guys have a level of hospitality and treatment that they feel like they are kings. And 
and they absolutely love it. So uh, the feedback is extremely great. Um, one of the things uh, I have been working on, especially back then, uh, even before, um, we do need to, um, and I love helping you do that, uh, just offering my knowledge and experience. For example, uh, it's no brainer to see that South America, when I started working on it again, um, vinyl was inexistent. And so there were difficulties with promoters setting up um, the decks and getting things uh, straight. Not many agents do that, but I love doing it. So I help promoters, you know, guiding them through how to do things properly and how it works. And like why I accepted to do this interview for you guys. So uh, yeah, it is an ongoing um, work in progress, I think. Uh, on the learning curve, but uh, I'm glad that putting South America back in the map of our tours and our music has been really amazing. So thank you for that. Um, going back also to the Electronic Beats um, interview and the talk I did, uh, that day I launched the coaching platform. Um, basically my background in psychology, sociology and politics, plus some qualifications I have on being a coach. Um, this is started with my artist. I always say, you know, for you to get to, to somebody, you need to get to their heart. And sometimes there is a lot of clutter around where we can't uh, um, um, reach that artist or that person. Sometimes it's psychological problems, sometimes it's personal life. So I help them and guide them through removing all these barriers that are around in order to get to the core of um, who they are. And then I can start managing an artist. So this is something I do internally in my agency and I took it out now uh, and created its own platform. Um, that goes for like youngsters in the scene and you know being in the nightlife there are drugs, sleep deprivation, all these things that uh, you know in a lot of countries like in Romania right now they have a lot of stigma dealing with it um, they don't really openly talk about drugs, they don't openly talk about sexuality, they don't openly talk about many aspects of everyday life and so when they come to me um, mind you I'm not a, a therapist although I use techniques from therapy um, they feel really comfortable talking to to me and I am able to help them because I know what they did on the weekend. I know how long they stayed awake and I know how that contributes to, you know, uh, some of their problems. So um, if you want to check it out, uh, the address is is for Isis Salvatera coaching dot art, a -R -T. Um, Check it out. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, you can write to me directly on Facebook or you can email me. Um, I'm always happy to speak to anybody and exchange. So, sending you a um, big kiss. Gracias a todos. Eh, perdona por no hacer en, en español, pero creo, bueno, creo que puede derecho, pero mejor que esté en inglés. Um, un besito a todos. Eh, espero verte muy soon. Muy pronto. Besos.